Hey everyone, so this week we're going over the rest of the muscles. Um, again, you're probably going to be tested on cat muscles, so definitely watch the videos. But if you did happen to get a mink, um, I'm just going to help you uh, find the muscles, cut out the borders, and kind of explain what the muscles are. So it's pretty much the same information as the cat video videos, except this is geared towards minks, in case you have a mink. Okay, so on your list, we're going over sections 4, 5, 6, 10, 11, 12. So that is all the um, thoracic area, so in the chest area, and your abdominal area, and we're even going to do the forearms, which it's going to be very difficult to see on a mink. Cats have longer arms, so their muscles are more defined. Um, but we will still try to get into this arm and see what we could find here. All right, but we are going to start with the thoracic region. As you can see, there's tons of fat all over my mink here, but you can still see some of the muscles already. Now what I suggest you do is go ahead and start peeling off the fat. You can use your fingers, you could use the curved forceps, make sure you're using the back side of the forceps so it's safe, not puncturing any muscles or anything. And you can even take a piece of paper towel and fray any of the um, connective tissue or any other fat that you see to help you pick it off. Now you're trying to find the borders of these muscles and really that's our goal here. So we're going to find the borders and then cut out the borders. So what I suggest you do is look in your lab manual at the cat muscles because mink's muscles are pretty similar to cats and see exactly where the muscles are and where relative area the borders should be. And then try to find that border and then cut it out. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up this mink for a little bit so I'm just going to pause the video while I do that because there's no point in you watching. Um, but I'm going to sit here, get all this fat off, and find all the borders to all these muscles, and then I will start actually dissecting. Okay, so I've cleaned up most of the superficial thoracic now, and I haven't cut yet because I do want to show you some of these borders. Alright, so there's going to be one, two, three, and then a very thin muscle on top of three, four muscles that you need to find the borders of. Alright, so first off, I cut off all the fat that was around here. This led me to my first muscle. Um, I also want to show you, sometimes if you pull on the muscle itself, you'll be able to see the border better. Alright, so there is a border right here, making up this thin ribbon of a muscle right there. Then we have a big triangular shaped one here. And then you'll see another muscle, it's almost a triangle right here, that's kind of running a different direction than this one. So this one's running this way, while this one's running this way. And then on top of this one, you're going to see another thin muscle running the same direction, but you need to find the border and get it out. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Again, you're just going to be using scissors once you find these muscle borders. Um, another, again, a helpful tool is the probe itself. So sometimes if you take a probe, get it underneath the muscle, you'll be able to find the other border. And once you find the border itself, you can go ahead and cut it out. Of stretching everything out, you can see it better. This border right here, and the border on the other side of that big muscle right here. Okay, let me just clean this up a little bit, make sure I got everything up separated. Okay, and the last one I'm going to cut out, you'll see the border of it right here and right here. So it's on top of this bigger muscle that we just got out. 
okay? So here's that bigger muscle. We have this little band right here that we need to cut out now. Okay, so this muscle was pretty stuck. Uh, so what I did was try to, I cut it in half and try to pull it this way and this way just to make it nice and even. Um, but this is one band going straight across. I just cut it to make it easier to get off with the bigger muscle. Alright, so now that we have all these muscles out, we can talk about these muscles. Okay, so coming down here, you have two muscles that are kind of running the same direction. This first one is a muscle that mink and cat have that humans do not. Alright, this is called your Xiphi humoralis. And everything you need to know is in the name for where it is. Alright, it starts at the xiphoid process of the sternum. That's where the xiphi is coming in. And it goes all the way up to the humerus. Alright, if you kept following this muscle, it would go all the way up to the humerus, which is this bone right here. So this is called your xiphi humoralis. And then you have a group of muscles called your pectoral muscles. Alright, so this one that's right above the xiphi humoralis is called your pectoralis minor. Alright, your pectoralis minor is smaller in humans than the pectoralis major, but in mink and cat, the minor is actually larger than the major. So this is a bigger one. So pectoralis minor is bigger in mink and cat. Alright, then above that we have the pectoralis major right here. Alright, so you have your pectoralis major here and here. Alright, so this last muscle that I reflected or right here to get out goes from your pector pectoralis muscles all the way to the forearm and this is a muscle that only mink and cat have or quadrupeds really have and humans don't have this alright but you still should know the name of it um, since it's going from the pectoral muscles and then going to the forearm if you remember the region of the forearm this muscle becomes easy to remember this is called your pecto antebrachialis. Remember your antebrachial region is your forearm. So pecto antebrachialis is a thin ribbon of a muscle that goes all the way there. Now when we cut out the rest of the pectoralis major right here on the upper border, the more anterior border, we cut it away from this muscle. And this is a muscle we covered last class. This is your clavotrapezius and clavodeltoid. You could follow this around and see that it is the clavotrapezius clavodeltoid. Alright, so just keep that in mind that these were connected. However, if you do get it out or get the border out, you'll also see another muscle underneath. And that muscle underneath is actually still your pectoralis minor. Your pectoralis minor is going all the way up here on the mink and cat. So the pectoralis major is actually on top of the pectoralis minor. Alright, so one more time. Xiphi humoralis, pectoralis minor, pectoralis major, Pecto antebrachialis, pectoralis major, pectoralis minor deep, and then clavotrapezius clavodeltoid. Okay, so the next step is to go deeper into the thoracic on the ventral side. And to do that, I'm just going to reflect the pectoral muscles right here at the midline. Alright, we're going to reflect them that way. Okay, so I have turned the mink around and I reflected all the pectoralis muscles, remember I cut them right here and reflected them this way to get to these deeper muscles, but I, before I got into them I wanted to show you what you should expect when you cut the pectoralis muscles out of the way. You're going to see a lot of fat and fascia here that needs to be cleaned up. Um, also you're going to see the ulnar nerve right here as well, so if you see the ulnar nerve you know you're in the right area. Alright, so I'm going to pause the video and just go ahead and clean all this up and come back to these muscles. Alright, so to clean this up again, all I'm doing is taking off the fat with the back side of, uh, back side of my uh, forceps, using a paper towel to rough up any of the connective tissue and peel that off with my fingers or my forceps, and just generally looking for borders of the muscles that are right here. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and do that. Okay, so once you clean up all the fat and fascia off of here, this is what you're going to see. Again, here's your ulnar nerve. Um, you're going to see this muscle that has multiple heads. It should all be attached right here. Alright, this muscle is a muscle that we covered already when we looked at the dorsal side of this organism. So this is that muscle that separates the scapula from the rest of the body. So this is your serratus ventralis right here, or your boxing muscle. And again, kind of pulls the scapula this way. Alright, so that's your serratus ventralis. Just know you can see it from two different angles, from this angle or from the backside. 
All right, so right above the serratus ventralis, you're gonna see another muscle. And this one has multiple heads, but you don't need to know every head, you just need to know one head. All right, so I'm gonna outline the head right here. It's almost like a little ray of sunshine coming out from underneath the ulnar nerve here. All right, this is your scalene muscle, or one of the heads of your scalene muscle. Specifically, this very long head is called your intermediate head. All right, and that's because we do have a medial and we do have a lateral head that you don't need to know. So just know if you see this, know it's the scalene muscle, and it's specifically the intermediate head of the scalene muscle. All right, once you're done with that, you're going to start noticing this muscle right here that takes up pretty much the whole side of the organism. We're going to come back to this muscle when we get to the abdominal region, but this is your external oblique. And going back to the intermediate head of the scalene, if you go right above it, you're going to see another muscle that kind of goes down the length of the sternum towards the external oblique. This is called your transverse costarum. So transverse meaning going across, so it goes this way across and then down. And costarum, costa meaning ribs. So going across the ribs is really the name of this muscle. Transverse costarum right here. And it's right next to something called the linea alba, which is a white line that goes down the center of the organism. So I'll talk about that again when we get to the abdominal region. All right, so one more time in here. We got our serratus ventralis. All right, it ends about right here. Then we have this sunshine muscle right here. This is your intermediate head of the scalene. And then you have another muscle going across the ribs towards the midline right here called your transverse costarum. Then you have your external oblique. Now the next muscles we need to cover are just deep to the external oblique. So you might need to cut out a little window right here to see them. So I already started. So I cut out the external oblique, just a little window to see these first muscles. When you see ribs, you know you're in the right area. Okay, so just to show you what I did, I cut out part of the oblique right here and I reflected a little bit more of it just so I could really have a good field of view. Um, you're gonna start seeing, so again, just getting oblique out of the way. You're gonna start seeing the ribs here and that's when you know you're getting to the next muscle. So if you look closely enough, the muscle that is running between the ribs in this general area is going to be running kind of this way, almost with the ribs. So your ribs come down and then kind of carve inwards this way. Now you have this muscle and the fibers are running this way. So what happens when this muscle contracts? All right, so you have ribs coming down like this. You have muscles running with it. What happens when this muscle contracts? What's going to happen to the body cavity? All right, well, the body cavity is going to, the thoracic cavity specifically, is going to expand, right? The rib cage is going to open up. Since the ribs are going this way, when they get pulled this way, they open. All right, so this opening causes inhalation. So this first group of muscles that are kind of running with the ribs are called your external intercostals. External meaning outside, and intercostal meaning between the ribs. So the external intercostals run with the ribs, and when they contract, they open the rib cage. All right, then you're going to cut another window out in the external intercostals. And you're going to see another layer of muscles deeper, but here the muscle fibers are kind of running perpendicular to the ribs. All right, so this muscle is covering the whole ribs running perpendicular. So again, here's our ribs, but now we have muscles going this way. What happens when they contract? Well, when those muscles contract, they're going to close the ribs or collapse the ribs. So that's used in exhalation. All right, so this lower layer is called your internal intercostals. So internal intercostals running against the ribs or perpendicular to the ribs causing exhalation or collapsion of the thoracic cavity. While the external intercostals are running with the ribs and causing inhalation because when they contract they open the rib cage. And all of this was underneath the external oblique that's right here. All right, so that's all the muscles of the thoracic region that we need to cover. So now we're going to start moving into the abdominal region but first, I'm going to follow the outline of the external oblique all the way down. So I'm going to do that first because that's the easiest to see. Okay, so now we're cutting down this external oblique. I was just following the edge. Really all I did was find a good spot that I obviously saw the edge, made an incision with my scissors, and then used the probe 
to work my way down, find the edge again, and keep on cutting. Now, yours might be a little different, but whatever they did to my mink, they sewed it back closed right here, and it kind of bunched everything together. Alright, so just keep that in mind. That's why it looks so funky down here. But I also did it to the other side, so I got the border of the external oblique on this side out, too. Now there's a couple of things that you need to notice here. One, you're not going to be able to see very well because of what they did to my mink. All right, because it's all bunched up, you can't clearly see the linea alba. All right, so I just cut where they sewed the animal back together out of the way. You see these sutures right here. I cut those out of the way, and they actually cut down the linea alba to do whatever they're doing inside the abdominal cavity. But down here, you can almost still see it if you keep following it down. There is a line that goes down straight down the middle of the organism. You can even kind of see it in the thoracic region. All right, and this is the midline, and we call this the linea alba because it's a white line that goes down the center of the organism. Again, this is not the best example because of how they cut it. All right, they cut it down the linea alba. All right, so unfortunately, you can't really see that right now. Um, just know that there's a white line that makes up the midline going all the way down the organism. You can see it more in the thoracic area, but it should go all the way down to the pelvis. All right, so then we also have our external oblique. All right, external oblique on both sides. All right, I started getting off this side as well because they sutured it here on the external oblique, so it's, again, hard to see. Um, but underneath the external oblique, you're going to see a group of muscles that make up kind of ribbons that go down the whole length of the organism. So they, again, sutured straight through this, but at least you could see the ribbon right here. All right, if I kept getting this external oblique out of the way, you could see it more defined, okay? So this ribbon goes all the way down the length of the organism. All right, this is called your rectus abdominis. So your rectus abdominis is your ab muscles that everybody likes to work out. So your rectus abdominis is this group of muscles that go straight down the organism. All right, so abdominus meaning in the abdominal region, rectus again means parallel to. Well, this is called rectus abdominis because it's parallel to the midline. It's abdominal muscles that are parallel to the midline, rectus abdominis. All right, so that is that ribbon of muscles there. And it's right underneath the external obliques on both sides. So external oblique, external oblique. Okay, so one more thing I wanted to point out before we move any further is to make sure that nobody gets confused between the external oblique, which we just got done doing, that was this one right here, and your latissimus dorsi, which was that wing that's coming off the back. This is the first muscle we covered. All right, but they're very similar and they're on top of each other. You see the latissimus dorsi, peeled off, is on top of the external oblique, which takes up pretty much the whole side of the body. Okay, so next we're gonna move on to the neck muscles. So I need to clean up up here. Again, I'm just doing the same thing I have been doing by peeling off any fat or anything and then uh, using a paper towel to scrub off any of the connective tissue and all the while using my fingers or my forceps to do so. Okay, so with the neck, I haven't cleaned up that much yet, but um, there is a lot of dense uh, connective tissue here that you have to get underneath. Again, I know it was connective tissue because if I got my forceps underneath it, I still see the shininess of the metal, all right? So muscle itself is not that transparent while other types of tissue are. And so I was just simply getting out of the way, looking for these two muscles right here that make a V that kind of follow the jaw, the mandible. All right, so once you find those, you can go ahead and get the um, border out of both of these, and that's as far up here as you need to go. As long as you can see these muscles, you've gone far enough. Also, you want to get some of this connective tissue and some skin, there's still some skin on mine, out of the way to see this muscle off to the side here. This is a nice round muscle. Once you do that, you don't need to cut out the border, just know that muscle's there. Cut out the borders of these two muscles, and then we'll talk about the rest of them that are on this mink. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Take my scissors. There is a border right there that I'm going to cut out. Once I get a little bit out of the border, I'm going to go ahead and use my probe and try to get underneath it. Get some of this connection. 
Connect the tissue out of the way. All right. So we got that muscle out. And there's another one on the other side that I kind of already worked out as I was cleaning it up. All right, then there's two more muscles right here that go straight down that are kind of underneath these muscles that we just got out. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the names of these. All right, so these muscles right here that are following the jaw, they kind of make a V just like the jaw makes a V. Here's the mandible, here's the muscles right here. These are called your digastrics. All right, so digastrics are the ones that are directly following the mandible. So here's a digastric, I got my probe underneath, here's a digastric. Then underneath the digastric you have two more muscles which are thin ribbons that are running down the esophagus. Alright, so once you have these out, um, around here is where you're going to find your hyoid. You probably won't see it, especially on your animal because it's so small, but this is where your hyoid is, that bone that floats in our neck. Alright, well the part of the name of these came from that bone. Okay, these are called your mylohyoids, right here and right here. Mylohyoids, going to the hyoid bone. Then you have two more that go from the hyoid all the way to the sternum. And you probably will, oops, and you probably will have these um, kind of torn up because they, a lot of times when they inject the animal with the preservative, they will tear through these muscles. However, I was lucky and still have one left right here. All right, so this is another muscle. It's almost the same as the uh, mylohyoids, except it's going from the hyoid bone to the sternum. So you should have two of them here. These are called your sternohyoids. So mylohyoids going from the mandible to, to hyoid, sternohyoids going from hyoid to sternum. All right, and then you have two muscles coming off the sides of the neck right here and right here. You'll see the separation of this muscle and the clava trapezius clava deltoid. Okay. So, this is called your sternomastoid, all right, going from sternum to the mastoid process that is on your temporal bone, so sternomastoid. All right, and then the last muscle that you need to know up here in the neck, in the cervical region, is this round muscle that we got out of the way before, all right. These are called your masseters. And masseter's root word is the same root word as mastication, which means to chew. Well, these are your jaw muscles right here, your masseters. All right, so this is helping you chew your food. All right, so one more rundown. The ones that are directly following the mandible that I got a probe underneath there and a probe underneath here are called digastrics. Underneath that, you have two ribbons that are going from the mandible to the hyoid. These are your mylohyoids. Then you have two more going from hyoid to sternum. These are called your sternohyoids. I still have one intact. And then the ones off to the side, they're going from sternum to mastoid process is your sternomastoids. All right. And then finally, we have our jaw muscles way up here, which are nice and dome shaped. These are your masseters. And that is all the muscles of the cervical region that you will need to know. So the last region that we need to cover is the forearm. And I'm going to really take my time on this because these muscles are very tiny especially on a mink. Mink's legs and limbs are actually very short compared to, say, a cat. So we need to take our time, make sure it's nice and clean, but also don't tear anything up. Okay, so that's what I'm going to work on next. All right, so I just want to see you, or show you what I have so far with the forearm. You can see I got a lot of the fascia off and everything, and I'm just seeing the outlines of these muscles. There's still some fascia over these muscles, but I don't want to get any deeper because this fascia that is on these muscles are so, is so tight that if you try to pull it off, there's a good chance you're going to rip the muscle. So you don't want to go all the way to the muscle. You just want to get far enough where you can see the borders and everything. All right, a couple things I did want to point out before we go any further. Um, we did this last week, but it's good starting points so you know exactly where we are. Here is your spinotrapezius down here. Here's your acromiotrapezius, and here's your clavotrapezius. Here is your levator scapulae ventralis. All right, it's not as clean on this side as I've made it on the other side, but at least it's there. Here's your clavodeltoid. Here's your spinodeltoid, that round oval-shaped one. And then here is your acromiodeltoid. All right. We've already covered these muscles, so we're actually moving a little further down now on the arms. That's where we need to be now, is down here. 
All right, the first thing I want you to do is to reflect this muscle, which you should have got the border out when you're cleaning up this arm. The border comes off pretty easily. But it pretty much goes underneath the back side of the arm and can cover the part of the inside of the arm here. All right, this is a muscle that a lot of quadrupeds have that we don't. All right, this is called your epitrochlearis. All right, epitrochlearis is just saying that it connects at the trochlea or right next to the trochlea. All right, so epitrochlearis right there. We need to get this out of the way in order to see any of the muscles underneath. And as you can see, as I pull, it's already coming up pretty easily. You can easily see the fascia right there that's connecting the border. So I'm just going to go ahead and get that off. All right, so working off the fascia. There's your epitrochlearis, right? All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and cut it right here near the trochlea. and reflect it. All right, so now I just reflected my epitrochlearis. All right, and that was an important step to see a lot of these upper arm muscles. All right, but again, epitrochlearis is a muscle that uh, quadrupeds have that we don't. So that's four muscles that we covered that quadrupeds have that we don't. We covered the caudofemoralis when we're looking at the hip. We looked at the xiphi humoralis when we're looking at the chest. We looked at the pecto antebrachialis when we're looking at the chest. All right, and now we have the epitrochlearis. All right, those are four muscles that quadrupeds have that humans do not have. All right, so got that out of the way. I'm going to ignore this because this is all part of my pectoralis major and pectoantebrachialis right there, but we're more interested in the muscles that are underneath that. Okay, so here's your ulnar nerve again. So you want to lift that up a little bit to find the border of this head right here, which I just got out of the way, just like that. It's right underneath the ulnar nerve. And the other part of the head's probably right here. The head's really tiny. Okay, so looking at the inside of the arm here, there's a couple muscles that you need to identify. This one that is just above the ulnar nerve, you can even look at it. It's like a little ball or a little dome-shaped muscle. This is called your biceps brachii. All right, this is what people commonly refer to as the biceps, but now that you have, are more informed, you know bicep just means two heads. Well, the biceps brachii does have two heads. All right, but you don't need to know the heads of this particular muscle, just that it's a bicep brachii right here, and a lot of people work this muscle out because they think it looks good, right? All right, underneath the epitrochlearis that was right here that we reflected, all right, that is where you're going to see the first head of your triceps brachii. So your triceps brachii have three heads, right? Tries in the name. You do need to know each of the heads here, okay? So on this side, right underneath the ulnar nerve, you're going to see a head right here, all right? Try to get the ulnar nerve out of the way. So it's a little darker. It's right here, all right? I separated the, this head from this head, which is much larger already. This is called your medial head of the triceps brachii, and it's medial, it's on the inside of the arm. If you think of this thing standing up, this is more towards the medial side. So there's your med medial head, right? Then you have this long one that wraps the back side of the arm. This is called your long head of the triceps brachii, and that goes all the way to the other side. All right, so it's still continuing on right here, and the border is about right here. Let's see if I can get that border out with just my probe. See, I see where it's shiny. I know that's still border. Cut that. All right, now that's started, and now I can keep going. All right, continuing on. So again, this is still part of your long head of the triceps brachii that goes all the way from the back side of the arm. And then you have this head right here, which is pretty big on the outside. This is called your lateral head of the triceps brachii. So your triceps brachii is a pretty big muscle if you can count all the heads. So we have a lateral head, a long head, and then a medial head, which is tiny, of the uh, triceps brachii. All right, and then there's one more muscle that you need to see. Um, this one can be difficult. You really got to get a lot of fat and everything out of the way. Okay, so pushing everything out of the way. Here is my spinodeltoid. Here is my clavodeltoid. Here is my chromodeltoid, just a little deeper. 
If you follow your acromial deltoid down, you'll notice it comes to a triangle and the point ends about right here. But just past that and just underneath the lateral head of the triceps brachii, you see another muscle. All right, this is called your brachialis right there. So brachialis is on the lateral side. Do not get this confused with the biceps brachii, which is on the medial side. All right, so brachialis, just a little deeper, pretty much the same plane as the uh, chromial deltoid, and then brachial or bicep brachii on the inside. Bicep brachii, brachialis. All right, so that's all the muscles of the proximal arm. So now we're gonna start working on the distal muscles. Now I am gonna go ahead and find all the borders and cut them out with scissors. Um, and then show you on the camera and I want to do this because some of these muscles have mul multiple heads and they look like two muscles but they're actually one muscle so I'm gonna find those first cut them out and then show you so you can correctly cut yours out now one thing I do want you to be careful of and pay attention to is that you have a very small muscle stretch his arm out a little bit. You have a very thin, small muscle right here on the top of the arm. Just be very careful not to puncture that. All right, we will need that. I'm gonna really take my time to get that one out of the fascia. When you get it out of the fascia, it will be connected this way and kind of hanging. All right, and I'll show you what I mean after I cut all these. All right, so we're gonna go over the muscles and I'm gonna show you exactly where the borders are for a lot of these. Um, again, some of these muscles have multiple heads, so it's actually one muscle and not more than one muscle. Um, so I just want to show you where the outlines are first, so when you're cutting yours, then you can see where the outlines are and tell a muscle from a head. Also, on top of that, if you're following along in your book, cat's muscles look a lot different than mink muscles down here. If you see, mink muscles' legs are really short, and it affects their physiology um, compared to a cat. So there might be extra muscles in a mink that you see that you wouldn't necessarily see in a cat. There are deeper muscles to these that we don't really cover in this course. So things just might look a little different. So I will try to point those out as we go through this. All right, but I'm starting on the outside of the distal leg right now. So this is the outside of it. All right, I'm gonna go through the muscles here. Um, the first muscle I wanted to start with was this little muscle that's floating off into space. When you are cleaning up your leg, there is a chance that you rip this muscle off because it's super tiny and very thin and easy to break. All right, but you have this little ribbon of a muscle out here. All right, this is called your brachioradialis, and it's because it goes from your brachial region across your radius. Now, you remember, your radius is that smaller bone that's in your forearm. All right, your radius goes to your thumb. Here's the thumb of the mink, and this muscle is going from the radial region to the thumb, going over the radius. So that's what that little satellite muscle is right there. All right, once you get that out of the way, then we're going to go through the extensors. You have a bunch of extensors on the outside of the limb here. Okay, so the first one you're going to see is this giant triangle shaped one right here that's just below the brachioradialis. All right, that one right there. Let me make sure the camera's in focus here. All right, this is called your extensor carpi radialis longus. All right, there's four words to this name. Now, things, I'm going to give you some tricks on how to remember all these. One, on the outside of the arm, the more lateral side of the arm, everything is called extensor, okay? They're all used to extend the wrist or the fingers, all right? These are all extensors out here. All right, carpi, meaning going to the carpals, all right? So here's your carpals, the wrist bones. So extensor carpi are the ones that are going to extend the wrists. So you have two extensor carpies. All right, you have one here that covers the radius and you have one down here that covers the ulna. All right, so this one is called your extensor carpi radialis. Well, this one over here is called your extensor carpi ulnaris. But with your extensor carpi radialis, you have two of them. All right, you have a longus and a brevis. You only see the longus on this side, while on the medial side is where you see the brevis. And I'll talk about the brevis when we get to the medial side. But just know on the lateral side is extensor carpi radialis longus. And then over here is your extensor carpi ulnaris, because it covers the ulna. Now you're going to have two muscles in between these extensor carpies. You have extensor carpi radialis, extensor carpi ulnaris. In here, you have two things called extensor digitorum somethings. All right, you have two extensor digitorums. 
This first one that's right underneath the extensor carpi radialis is called your extensor digitorum communis. And it's called communis because there's actually multiple heads of this muscle. Depending on the one you have, you might see another head starting right here. All right, this might look like two muscles when it's really one. But that is just one muscle and it's called communis because there's multiple heads, so extensor carpi or extensor digitorum communis. And then the one just next to that is called your extensor carpi lateralis because it's the most lateral of, out of all these muscles. All right, the most lateral being mostly on the outside of the arm. All right, so those are all your extensors right there, the four right there. Again, on each side of the wrist, we have a extensor carpi. So on this side of the wrist, we have extensor carpi radialis. On this side of the wrist, you have extensor carpi ulnaris, named after the bones that they're covering. And then between them, you have two digitorums, extensor digitorum communis and extensor digitorum lateralis. All right, I know the extensor carpi ulnaris because it's right next to this larger muscle that goes the length of the bottom of the arm here. All right, and this is going to be the first muscle that we cover for the inside of the arm. So let me readjust everything here. Okay, this is the first of your flexors. So in the inside of the arm, you're gonna have flexors. This first one, has pretty much the same name as this extensor that it's next to, except it, it doesn't extend, it flexes something. Well, if you remember, this one was called your extensor carpi ulnaris because it extends the carpes and it's over the ulna. Well, this one is called your flexor carpi ulnaris because it flexes the carpes and it covers your ulna. So extensor carpi ulnaris and flexor carpi ulnaris right next to each other. All right, next to this very large flexor carpi ulnaris, you have another large muscle. Again, let me make sure everything's in focus here. Okay. This is a very large muscle, and I'm going to show you the outline. Here's the border right here, and here is the border right here. You will notice there is another little tiny muscle that looks like it's a part of this muscle. This muscle is a muscle that we don't cover in this class because it's typically deeper on a cat and you don't see it. However, with the mink it's easy to see, so just know it's there, but we're ignoring that one. But it's pretty flush with this bigger muscle that we do cover. All right, this is called your palmaris longus. It's a long muscle that goes straight to the palm of the hand. All right, palmaris longus. It's usually bigger and it's also usually shinier. If you look closely enough, it's a little shiny. You might not be able to see it on the camera, but if you're looking at the real specimen, it's usually shinier right here. Palmaris longus is a muscle that we have as humans. However, it is reduced and it's vestigial in us, which means we don't use it anymore. All right, this is a good muscle to have if you're a quadruped, but we haven't been quadrupeds in millions of years. So we still have this muscle, we just don't use it. And some of us can't even see it anymore. However, some of us can. If you put your fingers together like this, all right, put your fingers together like this, and then look at your wrist, if you have this one ligament that's going straight to the palm, then you still have your palmaris longus. However, a lot of us have such a reduced one, you don't even see it, all right? And again, this is a vestigial muscle. We have it, but we don't use it anymore because we don't walk on all fours anymore. All right, so palmaris longus. And again, we're ignoring this little muscle that looks like it's right next to it. All right, keep on going. This next muscle is a thin one right here. This is another flexor carpi, just like we saw a flexor carpi ulnaris on this side of the palmaris longus. Well, this side we have a flexor carpi radialis. All right, this is a radial muscle. It's covering the radius. So flexor carpi radialis, flexor carpi ulnaris, in between is the palmaris longus. All right, on top of that one, then you're going to see this muscle that has multiple heads. And it usually makes a triangle shape here. All right, so it's wider here, it gets narrow here. I already cut out the two heads here, but these are supposed to be together. All right, this is your pronator teres. All right, this is a pronator teres. It's named after the motion at pronation. All right, it's a pronator teres, but that's all you need to know for that one. Then we come to the top here, and you'll see this muscle again. So we already covered that one. All right, that is your brachial radialis, that really thin muscle It's easy to break if you're not being careful dissecting. And then you see this muscle again, right underneath the brachial radialis. This is your uh, extensor carpi 
radialis again. However, on this side, it's the brevis. Now remember, on this side was the longest. Well, on this side, it's the brevis. So extensor carpi radialis brevis, extensor carpi radialis longus. All right, and then the last muscle, we need to go to the outside or the lateral side of the arm again to see. All right, it is extremely tiny on the mink. It's easier to see on a cat and definitely easy to see on humans. But you have this little tiny muscle right here that kind of wraps the elbow. All right, it's really holding a lot of these muscles in place to the elbow, and it's kind of where the name came from. All right, this muscle is called your anconius. It's a really tiny muscle right here. All right, anconius is the root word there is anchor, and it's anchoring a lot of these muscles to the elbow, so that's your anconius. All right, so go through these one more time. So we're on the lateral side. This one that's floating in the space, that is your brachioradialis. Then the first larger triangular shaped one here is your extensor carpi radialis longus. The first ribbon shaped one that might have two heads, you might be able to see it, is your extensor digitorum communis. Then the one next to that is another extensor digitorum, but it's the most lateral one, so that's your extensor digitorum lateralis. And the one next to that is another carpi, and this one's again is an extensor, so extensor carpi ulnaris because it's covering the ulna. And then you have your anconius right there, this little tiny muscle. Then you have this big one that wraps the bottom of the arm. This is your flexor carpi ulnaris, still over the ulna. Then we go to the inside. Next to the flexor carpi ulnaris, let me show you the border. Flexor carpi ulnaris. Then we have the palmaris longus, which is usually shinier and vestigial in humans. And then next to that, we have our flexor carpi radialis. And then we have this triangular shaped one that ha might have multiple heads. This is your pronator teres. Again, we have our brachial radialis over here. And then we have underneath that our extensor carpi radialis brevis. And that is all the muscles of the forearm that you will need to know.